Welcome everyone to today's video. We obviously also wanted to do something nice with the origin. And as you can slightly see from the video, I'm not yet back to Berlin, otherwise I would have just swapped in the Octane hard drive there, but not in the office without all the equipment at hand. Things are not that super easy. So I already tested network booting. However, our Arc load can somehow not load an init ID over network, making things slightly inconvenient. And also the usual stuff, missing USB ports, so this USB port I use for Ethernet, this USB port I use for my trusty portable SSD drive, so for a serial terminal I can't plug it into this machine, thanks to two USB ports, so I use the only USB port natively booted on the internal SSD here for this USB port for this screen there, and also SSH locked in there, so this window is the same serial screen there. You could say why don't you use a USB hub, yes I have a USB hub with me, but with all those 500 million USB standards I just don't have a micro USB cable with me, although I have gazillion cables of this in the office. I even on another travel brought just this micro USB cable, but of course I took it out of my back in the office because who needs so many USB cables on the go and here we are. Again, without a micro USB cable, of course I have, or is it micro, no, wait a second, this is uh, not micro, this is, how are they even called, micro, no, no. Anyway, this medium sized one. So, so I do the network booting here from this machine, with this Ethernet USB, also some of the kernel NFS stuff has some major hiccup, don't know what regressions are broken in this regard, so I need to figure that out in another video. So I am luckily found some user space. NFS server that works. So let's plug in this power and see what we are getting. Also making things more complicated, this GPU switching does not work on Linux. By the way, here on this serial console, we obviously have our SGI origin booting. The same here for convenience. And making things more complicated is that in this MacBook we don't have working GPU switching, so I currently run this NVIDIA Nuevo that does not have hardware accelerated video capture, so we capture here on the surface. So that is boot P, English keyboard, well prepared for this video. So keyboard TE, not to get too crazy today. So boot, no, this doesn't work or what? Hmm. Boot P, actually we can type on this one. Boot P and then arc load new, I think. I also had to majorly hack around in this DNS mask for arbitrary file loads here to work. I will maybe document this in another video. These are all the things. Are we not getting here something? Um, ah, maybe we are not running DNS mask. Yeah, that works now with DNS mask. And does it are? Maybe also should start some TFTP. So let's see. Unable to execute. This is when you continue the next day and all this stuff is not running as it was. So, but now hopefully, so. P. No such device, what? Good. So, um, and now. I I should have in the arc load, because init rd loading doesn't work as I said, I should have there some NFS server for an NFS root file system. It's the first time I'm testing this here. So no idea if this will probably not work at the first try, I guess. So, and this is a root server. Let's see how that is going. So maybe it's turning out. 
That's what I figured for the first trial. Let's investigate this more. So because I couldn't get this NFS server working here in the latest T2 Linux, it's also ridiculous that there were so many regressions that such basic things don't work. Somehow it has to do with glibc transitioning this RPC code stuff out of glibc and also from port mapper to some RPC bind and some of this new stuff does not just work. So I now have a much older decade old T2 installation where I have now some NFS server running and it looks like it could maybe work and because this RPC info stuff does not work on my new Linux already this does not show anything although all this stuff is started really strange though and this is no 168 107 I think here so exactly this basic stuff does already not work on my native Linux here and also at least here in this VM I can test mount this with NFS and this virtual machine is also started here with the MIPS image as HDB using old fashioned IDE but this doesn't matter and also with network here with a tap device and this is routed to a bridge so I now have a bridge device here so we now have a bridge here bridge zero and there we have Ethernet null and tap attached. So let's make another attempt to network boots octane. For this we now also need to edit where did I had this servers TFTP. Here we need to change the arccf for NFS for the IP address to what this currently got with DHCP. So we now have the DNS server and TFTP server running here and <laughs> the NFS server running in this virtual machine and yeah this is ridiculous I had regressions so let's see if this network boots because I finally ideally would want to see the origin let's also plug in this again because someone already nearly tripped on this nice cables here because who would respect my vintage tinkering here and power and also this machine just for the serial port so capture here and serial port there let's see what we're getting Also works best with Ethernet cable plugged in. And of course in Berlin I have a nice collection of network boot stuff but I probably have to modernize and also sort really all of them in a nice archive to have really all of them always readily available with historic snapshots and such. So loading the kernel, let's see if we are getting NFS mount then of course we would not have all this trouble if enetrd would just work over the network with arc load that's probably something i also need to fix eventually in the winter but that other things that i need you to share like and subscribe to have all this youtube ad financing to do all this esoteric and all this non-mainstream open source work so what we are getting here trying 107 so and we have apparently network mount finally after I had to edit the export fs because I had the 19 exported this as 192.168.1. asterisk but this was resolving to origin with my DNS mask rate server here so we have some kind of boot but it looks like no console anymore I thought I booted this console equals ttys0 yeah, console equals ttys0 so not really sure why we have no console here anymore it's of course not the best for this 
This will probably also be a bit of a nightmare to edit all the raw video material together later. Some subscribers sometimes comment they want to see a raw coding, but when we do raw coding then it's boring and also nobody wants to see it. 1949 is this by the way. Not updated though. Then I guess we are not somehow getting up here without... This is indeed not updating, just like I said it wouldn't. But then maybe... Let's try what happens if... Yeah, I ain't seen there much. So, obviously also better with NFS and the FS tab, so... Unfortunately, didn't see there any reset thing there so far, so I'm always power cycling the machine right now. Let's hope I'm not doing this too often. So I actually patched this root console thing quickly away. There was some previously... Can I scroll back so much? Anyway, <coughs> because um, even this is patched away, we're still not getting boot output here. I still wonder why after so many years of Linux, 25 years or so, this is not just working. So although I patched this away, I still don't have here following Siri console output. But I see this is booting now. I think it was not booting that much without my modification there, because previously I only had this WTEMP updated. I saw this already, but this init message here is new. So... This is what we are not seeing here on this Siri console, also here yeah, NFS. SS blinking there, also not right now. But a second ago, yeah, that was a blink. So yeah, I still need to figure out how I can get here some typing terminal. I wonder, alright, uh, actually I boot with run level 2. That could explain, because I have here, in the init top I actually have, Siri console I should have here two three four five TTY S zero all this unfortunately took already way too long more than it should let me fiddle a little bit more off camera to to get some more login working so yeah only in run level S this is updated so still need to figure out how to get this more booted because we still don't have a serial console there. So that is curious. So in the meantime, still origin and um, I edit here more and more stuff as I can edit here the root file system directly as we are NFS exporting this. So I'm editing here all kind of debug stuff here and now we get here as I'm now starting the kernel log services and such we get here TTY S1 is not a TTY that is curious. I wonder where our IOC3 serial is actually. This Mac is so old fashioned, I always want to touch it though. Um, it's the benefit of touch screens. Anyway, so this is curious. This is maybe why some stuff is not working as it should. Maybe it has another name. I need to check. And what I was editing here in this early boot is maybe slightly rock Linux slash T2 specific this RCD, RC script, and I'm basically adding here all kind of mount and cut and ls and dmask and syslog, klog, ssh, getty and such. So yeah, slightly frustrating when things do not work like you plan the work, but anyway, good learning lesson to what kind of things can go wrong and how to debug, and I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all this extra debugging and such and just as a proof var var lock that we are indeed running here, typing here with one hand holding the camera. Maybe I need speech input for that. So this is indeed the as 
should be, or did I remove it once I had here proxy PU info, but here it is visible also IP27 primary secondary CPU and here, yeah, SGI origin 179.2 megahertz and I hope to see you soon for the next tinkering to come.